Welcome to the Josh Johnson Show. I'm Josh Johnson, joined by my co-host, fellow stamp comedian, Logan Nielsen. Logan, how you doing, buddy? I am doing all right, man. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm good. I think that, like, it, it becomes tough after a while to, like, try to empathize in every scenario. Like... <laughs> Okay. Like, I, I don't know. I, I really try to put myself in other people's shoes, and I really try to give people the benefit of the doubt uh, mm-hmm. all, all the time, right? Can I just say we've started a couple episodes with, with not only just this, like, tone, but you've started with this sentiment. So, sounds like Josh is getting a little more judgmental, getting a little getting a little more over people. It's not, it's not even over people. It's, it's literally just that I... I'm starting to get confused. Sometimes you genuinely cannot understand what someone was thinking before something happened. You know? Okay, yeah. And, like, I, I, I've I, stopped trying to pretend I would have done the same thing under the same circumstances. Cause some, cause I, and maybe that's just an immature version of empathy where you're like, oh, maybe I would have done that if I were them or if I were in their situation, whatever. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's an immature form of empathy. I think. Well, it's I just, think it's yeah. It's not true. So that's why I'm saying it might be immature. Basically, I was um, okay. So our our hotel. I'm in Atlanta for the week, and our hotel is. It's near Chick Fil A. <laughs> God damn it! And today I didn't think that big of. Of an opening was going to be a Chick-fil-A story, but go ahead. Well, just today I was walking, and we're near Olympic Park, and so I was walking mm-hmm. across Olympic Park to get to the venue. And from, like, okay, so I was going a very roundabout way. I'm, like, really just trying to enjoy my day, so I'm taking my time getting there, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a guy that was leaving Chick-fil-A. Sure. And he had just too many drinks. Like, at a certain amount of drinks, you need to come back for these drinks. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, because. Or bring a friend. Yeah. Because every. Bring one of the friends who is getting one of those drinks. Yeah. Every cup holder, except for the handheld cup holders that only have two, has four spots. Mm -hmm. There's a fifth spot if you're creative enough and you plan ahead well enough. There is a fifth spot in the Specifically middle. Specifically the the tray one with the little divots, because they a lot of them do those those carry ones now with the handles, and those don't have the fifth spot. So that's why I wanted to be. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We're we're talking about the same thing. The, the if you're creative, the with cardboard the tray, ones with the handle. No, no, no. The cardboard ones with no handle. No, that's have what I was the saying. Fifth one, yeah. That's what I was saying. Those have the fifth spot, but a lot of places have switched to those just kind of cardboard like little carry ones with a handle, those don't have the fifth spot. That's what I was just trying to clarify. Mm. So then basically he had already enough for 10 drinks, right? Uh huh. My man only has two hands. Sure. He had a third. I don't know how he expected. First of all, I don't know how he got out the door. Because I didn't see him walking <laughs> out of the Chick Fil A specifically. I just they were Chick Fil A drinks, and Chick Fil A's right around the corner, right? Right. Yeah. But he's walking out, and he has propped up with the other two trays a third tray with five drinks on it. Wait. So okay. one hand. So hold on. Has one five hand. drinks in one tray. Sure, on the tray. Yes. Another hand has five drinks in one tray. Okay. He's, he's holding them together closely enough that they're holding up a third tray. That's insane. And like like you would expect, I don't know if it was the wind or gravity or whatever. Or fear. Completely <laughs> rational element took him out. Yeah. But the middle tray falls mm-hmm. and just splashes him with all the drinks. Sure. Yeah, but yeah. then, because of the weight of the third tray not being there between the two, the counterbalance just was off. And so the other two trays fall out of his hands. He didn't save a single drink. You get 15 drinks. You couldn't have one friend to come with you. And, like, at 15 drinks, they clearly need to hire another intern. I mean, I don't know what this man's job was, but, like... It- 
either he's an intern or he has 14 friends who don't care about him. Because it was, first of all, the amount of liquid was too much. Like, like the, it looked like it, it rained on him from oh, just well, the knees down. I'm sure even if you get like a medium at a place like that, they're pretty healthy sized cups. And so now imagine if they're all larges. Yeah. Shit loads of sweet tea on them. Socks were soaked. <laughs> and it's not even the type of person you can help. Because he just stood in it for a second. Like, you can see him just gathering himself. No, there's not a thing you can do except for walk up and just, like, put a hand on his shoulder and be like, hey, another day, buddy. Yeah. Tomorrow's, easily, a, tomorrow's a new day. Forget today. You've, you're done, you've done all of today that you can do. Easily $65 worth of beverage before tax. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you can't just go back in and be like, "I dropped it." Can you do that again? Can you do all yeah. of that again? And I do don't. Again I have no. I don't know this person at all. I don't know what their situation or their life is like. But it seemed like the way that they just stopped. It did not seem like. First of all, the color on their uh, pants suggested it was not all fifteen lemonades. Like right, these yeah. seem like very as specific as you can get at Chick Fil A drinks. Remember how you used to go down the fountain and you'd make, they used to call it a suicide. You'd get one of everybody, every, everybody. You'd get one of every drink, one you know? One of everybody, yeah. One, you want everybody, but you go through and get one of every drink. So he's he's now wearing a, a suicide <laughs> fountain drink on his shirt now. Yeah, suicide is a very apt word for. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if everyone called it that, but we used to call it that when I've heard of that before. We were kids. Okay. Yeah. It's a fucked up term, but that's what we called it when we were kids. I, I feel like there's there's only so much a person can like reasonably be asked to do and like even ask of yourself. And that's why I was like, in life, I used to be the person to be like, ah, oh, that poor guy just fighting to get his 15 drinks wherever he needed to get them. But mm. knowing how the world is and knowing that he is probably also staying at the same hotel as me, which means he's next to the Chick-fil-A which means mm-hmm. someone probably sent him to just get all the drinks right and not even hold a door open right yeah i'm like at a certain point bro you got to stand up for yourself yeah you have to be yeah. like i can't i have two hands if i could carry 15 drinks i wouldn't be working here i'd be on america's got talent <laughs> i'd be through to the next round like you can't, you can't just, just just walking around stage with trays, just going, uh, uh, Howie, uh, yeah. because you can't just let people be unreasonable and then be like, clearly, if I believe in myself, I can do this completely unreasonable thing. It's weird little things that are making you less empathetic. It's been mostly, I think, food related too. <laughs> yeah, almost always. <laughs> Yeah. What what is it about food situations like that that make you particularly annoyed with humans and make you lose that empathy for people? I uh, you know you know what's going to happen. So just move accordingly. Like <laughs> like you know you know what life is. You know what you, This is a great statement coming from you by the way. No, 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 no. I'm I'm there's a level at 15 drinks, mm-hmm. you're not paying attention to life. <laughs> I love the I just love the profoundness of this no, but <laughs> this it, beverage uh, run, the profound effect that this beverage run had on you. But at 15 drinks, because here's the thing, you cannot let yourself. <laughs> you can't let yourself become a slave to someone else's delusion, right? Right, yeah. So yeah. if someone is 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 like, oh hey, <laughs> go out there and bring me back fifteen drinks with your bare hands, no matter how much you love them or this job or believe in them or yourself, reality is gonna have a check in with you at some point. It it just feels like an unfortunate trap in how we as a society function. Um I know I asked you at the start of this episode, but um you good? I'm you fine. Right, but- <laughs> I have no I I don't think 
in life, I think I'm trying to carry eight drinks. Like it's a lot, but it's not crazy. That's literally yeah. what the tray is yeah. made for. For sure, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think in the in in summation, just don't don't have five kids. I guess I don't I don't know what I'm even getting at really it's just it felt exhausting ten, to see 10 him. friends is enough 10 friends is enough i think yeah. is what you're saying 10 friends is enough i 10 friends is enough 10 friends already might be too many to get drinks for yes that's for get drinks for yeah that's wild which actually gotta add you in there so nine friends is enough because you're the 10th you get you're the 10th drink slot and those fifth slots on the thing are bonus slots too so really let's you know let's trim it down seven friends is really all you need yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Move accordingly. Mm-hmm. Seven friends. That's all you need. Three. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one Just tray. one tray. One tray. Yeah. I think have have less friends. Have less friends, be less sticky. Well, I didn't it wasn't until I finished saying it that I didn't like it. How are you? <laughs> uh, I'm doing okay. I'm all right. Uh, I want to tell you about something that happened to me the other night. Um, didn't really happen to me, but it was something I, I had to deal with for a second. Uh, I'm. I think I've talked before how I'm. I'm. Uh, you know, I'm a substitute teacher, but I also I run a theater department. I, so I work with high school kids directing a play right now. Um, we had rehearsal last night. Um, last night was Halloween night too, so people are out and about. You know, stuff's happening. Um, but I'm having rehearsal with my kids, and then as we're finishing up, suddenly uh, a bunch of my kids, their phones start blowing up from their parents, and all it says, all the messages say are like, don't leave school alone, leave in groups. Like, that's all we're getting. So alarming messages to just, like, vague alarming messages, very horror movie messages from mm-hmm. parents. Mm-hmm. And then we get, like, finally someone's like, oh, they're looking for a guy. Who's out in town? Like the police are looking for a guy. Keep in mind, very, very small town, mm-hmm. right? So my kids are all freaking out now, and they're like, "When we all leave, can you come with us? Can you check our cars? Like, look in trunks and back seats." I'm like, "Absolutely, we'll do that." I'm like, "Go get your stuff. Everyone go get their stuff out of their lockers." I go outside, and there's like trucks driving around. People are just out and about looking, I think, for this guy too, or trying to check on stuff. And there's a parent pulling the van through the parking lot. And they're like, oh, are you guys wrapping up? I'm like, yeah, I'm about to lead them out. We're going to check cars. She goes, cool. And I was like, what's going on? They go, oh, he has a gun. And I go, oh, uh, shit. And then I go back into the school, and then it's just it's just me in the school. There's no other staff. And keep in mind, I am not a full-time teacher. So really, I shouldn't be in charge of most things. Mm-hmm. So I go inside. The only per- other adult there is the night janitor, and I ask her, and I, oh, I just tell her, I'm like, oh, hey, by the way, I guess they're looking for a guy, you know, who has a gun. And she goes, oh, well, then we have a couple doors in this school that are open till 9 p.m. We need to lock down the school, you and me, and like follow full like active shooter lockdown protocol. A janitor and a substitute teacher. I mean, what a buddy cop comedy. <laughs> right? What an adventure that would be. Yeah. Uh, luckily, before we had to really go nuts, because I was about to go like lock the kids in the library, and then we were going to go like door to door locking them, we got confirmation they caught the guy. Uh, guy was on the run. He was wanted for stuff in, in Missouri, I guess. Um, but luckily that guy, but there was just a quick moment of me being like, oh, shit, I need to suddenly be a teacher. I need to suddenly be an administrator. <laughs> And protect these kids. I mean, honestly, if you are on the run, small town is not the move. Like, I, I can't even believe. I obviously, if you're on the run, you're running, so you're not, you're not getting to be choosy about where you're running through. Yeah. But hey, the place where everybody knows everybody is not the place you want. You, to walk. Imagine walking into Cheers and being Ted Bundy. <laughs> Ted! It's yeah. like, guys, this there are regulars here. Yeah, you you gotta go. I mean, where only some know your name. No, but you got you got. It's like a mid tier town, right? Mm-hmm. If you gotta leave, you gotta flee a city. 
you know, major cities have big, you know, police task force and stuff like that. Small, small town like mine, everyone knows everybody. So we know when there's someone new in town that no one knows, right? Mm -hmm. You got to go slightly bigger. You got to go mid-tier town where everyone kind of knows each other, but not well. You or know like, what I mean? Or like at least enough people that people look like people. You know, like you know, like if some if you mm -hmm. saw someone in passing and they look enough like somebody else that you just let them go. That sure. would also be a good place to be, but just a a small town with like you know one high school because it's one high school, right? Yeah, yeah. With one high school, it's like that. You're getting caught, bro. You're you're done. Yeah. You're, what you're saying is you need a high you need a high enough likelihood of there being a doppelganger. Yes, exactly. You, you, you want to maybe look mm -hmm. like a guy maybe you've seen in passing. Yeah. Okay. I feel like when you when you are, I've never been on the run. I imagine you make a lot of snap decisions, which is probably why people get caught. But like. Mm -hmm. I don't know. As soon as soon as you told me he was on the run, in my head, in this story, I was like, they're catching this dude. This is like, there's not that many yeah. people here. Yeah. No. Even if you put on a fake mustache, we still don't know your head. Yeah. This this isn't like back in the day where you just wander into Old Town and be and just say like, oh, I'm I'm this guy. I'm Jerry here. Any yeah. work? That, that those that time doesn't exist anymore. Not only does it not exist anymore, even the small town will have the internet. So even the small town we is now, like, yeah. wait, <laughs> let me just uh, put your face next up to this wanted poster on my phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of your phone, were you just going to look down at that the whole time? You keep in mind we are videoing. Us, yeah, I'm trying so. to find something that I. Okay. I was, I was trying to find something that related to your. Uh, to your. Uh, on the to run thing. Oh, on the run thing. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Okay, I can't find it. But basically, it was a, it was <laughs> it sucks. Yeah, I, I did all that looking for nothing. Because um, it's our, when I start telling a story and you immediately only look down at your phone the whole time, it really makes me feel like you just don't want to hear the fucking story. <laughs> no, I'm always excited when you tell a story. On um, I'm I'm always like, oh man, I want to like have a thing for when you're done, and then and then. I <laughs> well, that sounds down. more like your your way. <laughs> You're excited for me to be done. <laughs> no, no, no for when you're done. I want to like. I'm joking. You know, I'm joking. Oh, the, as, as, here's the thing with yeah. with when you're on the rud. Like here's some like all the rud tips, right. or whatever. And then there was a uh, there's a <laughs> some on the run. I don't know if we should though be getting into on the run tips fully. I, I or guess, fuck it. Let's do it. If what's some on the run tips? Things some off the top of your head. Off off the top of my head, don't go to a small town. Uh, we get that one. Yeah. Number one, don't small also, town. This is another situation where uh, not having more than three friends is going to help you. Less people to rat you out. Mm hmm. Also, uh, move accordingly. Cash is king. Cash is king. It rules everything around me. Cash will get you. Uh, dollar dollar bill, y'all. Safely into many places, just nowhere to mm -hmm. stay. Most hotels need a credit card now. Yeah, yeah. So then there's no no amount of cash. In, in fact, if you offer to pay extra, <laughs> they're definitely not. Like they'll be like, <laughs> I we can't let you in now. I mean, I think there are still hotels you probably could still get to get into, but you are leaving itchy. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Do you know there's still You're some hourly motels? Yeah, yeah. Wow. There's a couple in there's a couple in Chicago. Yeah. I mean, can we talk about the levels of potential filth? Like, mm. I'm not saying they're all dirty. They don't all have to be dirty. But you're also not not saying that. I'm saying, like, for an hour, you either have to have the most fit and fresh for the day cleaning like, <laughs> like I can only imagine. Like, your your cleaners have to be actual athletes, right? To get the rooms properly clean for an hourly <laughs> motel. They're going and like sweeping and scrubbing like like they're uh, curlers in the Olympics. Like. Yeah, yeah. 
you probably got to have two in the room at a time so that someone's working on the bed while someone's working on the bathroom mm-hmm. and like all yeah. that stuff. It's just, it's just chaos. Yeah. And honestly, I, I don't, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's hourly. Mm, anyway, uh, <laughs> if you're on the run, I suppose you'll also want to have like, um, caps and shades for all occasions i will say uh that now caps and shades for all occasions now you want to probably wear a mask you know yeah a mask like a will help. mask no and uh i think that's really all you can do is not use a credit there's too much cctv now now if you did it and they want to catch you they're gonna get you they're gonna get you they're gonna get you good yeah Okay, so what do you our main tips? List? Av- avoid small towns. So that's, I'm, just, I'm recapping yours quick. So avoid small towns. Mm-hmm. Bring cash. H- hats. <laughs> hats are a plus. We'll, we'll go hats. Hats and masks. We'll just make that as one as one point. Okay. Hats and masks. Um. I'd say probably. You know, restrict your diet a little bit. You know, don't don't eat things you know that are gonna upset you. Because you you don't wanna be on the run, and then you gotta blow up a toity. You know what I mean? Yeah, that would be funny though if like they catch you, and they catch you in the toilet because you like you you're on a train and it's like true catch me if you can <laughs> style, but then you really got a boo boo right? Like you. Yeah. Can- <laughs> And so then you go, yeah. you go to the bathroom, and you over here just sitting there, just like, ah. And then now you brought attention to yourself, because it's brought like, hey, to why is this trade car stank? And it's like, oh, it's, it's whoever's in <laughs> yeah. there. And yeah, now this dog's going to find you. You walk out, and forget the hat, forget the shades, everybody remembers you. Everybody yep. remembers what you look like, what you're wearing, because you <laughs> blew up a bathroom on an Amtrak yeah. train. Yeah, yeah, so listen. I like to eat ice cream to alleviate stress, but when you're on the run, I'd say avoid dairy. Just generally, just generally go ahead. avoid dairy. Avoid anything that's going to cause inflammation, right? Yeah. So then yeah. there's okay. One second. This needs I'll to be the right healthiest now. you've ever eaten in your life. I'll look when it you're up on right now because now this is. I mean, people need to know the facts because there are certain foods that inflame you. Actually, I would even stay away from broccoli because if you're having any stomach issue, broccoli exacerbates it. Yes, that's true. That is um, true. I'd also say stay away from uh, soy. Mm-hmm. I think that like soy and some people, there are things that you're there's a there's a whole diet plan to find the foods that you're allergic to if you can't take the allergy test. Mm-hmm. And uh, there are things that people are mildly allergic to that will never come up in a big way. Like it'll never be as bad as a peanut allergy. But you're mildly allergic, so it's going to give you, like, the runs or something. I would say soy, and then uh, you already hit dairy. Then you're also going to, like, really, really want to keep in line with your overall bread intake. Because, like, inflammation is also a huge factor in just generally not feeling well. Right. What do you do? You 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 eat too much gluten-y stuff, you're going to get a little sleepy. I would say go to cryotherapy, but that's just me. If you go to a cryotherapy and you go ahead and get blasted with some cold, lock okay. out some of that inflammation. Yeah. Right? So if you're if you're in a town that has a cryotherapy lab, <laughs> clinic, I guess cryotherapy clinic. Storefront. I mean, it's really just a tank. Storefront. <laughs> okay. It's okay. really not that special. It's just sort of a tank and... <laughs> You know, it's a walk-up situation okay, as well. You so, really don't even need to make an appointment. All right. So a city that has an ice box, mm-hmm. uh, do that. Okay, so if you're going to be on the run, this is – I mean, let's focus on the, the run part of it, man. You got you to gotta be – this is going to be the best shape you've been in your life. Yeah. Okay, so take care of that body. Watch your diet. Honestly, going on the run might be the best thing that's ever happened to you. Honestly, going on a run like might finally, be tantamount to going on a marathon run. Like I feel like a marathon yeah. shape because you're going to need to run at in a, at a right. given moment. So you're going to need to stay yeah. limber 
you're going to need to stay uh, toned. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A lot of people think that muscle tone is physique. Muscle tone is actually, the definition of muscle tone is actually how quickly your muscles can spring into action. Right. We've yeah. made it an aesthetic thing of like, oh, you're so toned is in you look cut. Right. But it has nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're going to want to stay toned. You're going to want to stay hydrated, but not so hydrated that you keep running to the bathroom. You don't want to keep going to the bathroom. This is honestly the, the um, what do you want to call it? How do, how do I describe this? This is honestly the fine line of hydration between mm. being dehydrated and being so hydrated line? that you're... This is sure. <laughs> I can tell you liked it though, actually. No. Yeah. The thin wet line. If you have to pee too much, you're gonna be looking for bathrooms <laughs> instead of looking out for exits. You know what I mean? Oh. You're also gonna be I like, going. I like the way you places. worded that. You're gonna be yeah. going in places. What's in places? People and cameras usually. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, we're looking for a suspect on the run, uh, you know, five foot ten, white male, shades, hat. Always saying, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. <laughs> gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Uh, usually enters establishment saying, get out of the way, as he heads towards the <laughs> lavatory. <laughs> move, 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 move. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tends to stay in these bathrooms for anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah terrible diet clearly in there for too long imagine starts as one thing becomes another thing imagine if they truly catch you off of bathrooms like like you're not using credit cards you're just getting caught <laughs> on ccg they is literally like a whole law door episode of like yeah i saw him and it's like it's also a guy holding it he's like holding because he needs to go to the bathroom so bad and he's yeah. holding it and he's like the detectives are standing in front of the bathroom and he's like please and it's like uh, hey, someone was murdered, so maybe if you could help us try to find who did it. Because the, the cops love doing that on every cop show. They remind you the stakes for the other people, for the victims, mm-hmm. and yeah. then it, and it's supposed to shame you into talking to them in that moment. Right. But imagine you really got to go to the bathroom, and he was just here. And you don't know where he went, but you know he was just here. And the cops are interviewing right. you, and you're like, can I please go to the bathroom? Yeah. And it's like, listen. Someone lost their life, <laughs> and you could help us before it happens right. again. Yeah. Okay? No one lost their life here. It was somewhere else, but the guy we're looking for is just fucking up so many bathrooms. All right. Everywhere we go. Skid marks everywhere. We call him the skid marks killer. <laughs> he literally is just using the bathrooms of the people that he's killed. <laughs> It's his calling card. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just to see like them chasing that fugitive and having the, having the scene where the detective puts it together where he remembers how every gas station they've gone to that he's been spotted at, <laughs> the bathroom has been taped off. Yeah. And he puts it together. Wait a minute. He lights a match every time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we got... We got Manage your diet. Stay hydrated. Get fit if you're going to go on the run. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Get fit if you're going to go on the run. But also, look, I think that we have to talk about, we can't talk about this thing without talking about the detective that's going to be looking for this guy. Mm, You need a grizzled detective who, like, used to have a butthole, but now he just doesn't. He lost it. No, in a case. hold on. <laughs> well, because <laughs> you know, you always need the detective and the serial killer to be polar opposites. <laughs> Every good Morgan Freeman cop movie has a serial killer that's the opposite of him. Right, yeah. You really need someone who's just backed up, constipated. You really need someone who, like, <laughs> instead of, like, popping Tylenol or Pepto like they always do, he's just, just full on, just, like, popping laxatives. <laughs> just, like, 
all the time. Ah, nothing's happening. Yeah. Yeah. I think oh. that I think that he's like partially oh. because the best detectives are also people who have it in them to be serial killers, which is why they can catch them. And so mm-hmm. I think that the, what you're going to get in a story like this is you're mm-hmm. you're you're going to finally get someone who sees the crimes, right? Sees the murders, right. sees the bathrooms. And it's just yeah. like almost a little jealous. He wishes he could let loose <laughs> like that. <laughs> he wishes that in his life, he wishes that yeah. in his life he had <laughs> the level of, like he's too restrained, you know? He has too yeah. much control and he wishes he could be as crazy as this guy is. Cause he can't even <laughs> go. He can't even go in a public one. So if like like you know, you see where this dude is like yeah. killing people he and then to, using their bathroom. To, yeah. This this detective, he can't even go if he's at like a baseball game. Right. And he goes to the bathroom and he really needs to like use the bathroom. He can't go because there's so many other people there. So he sees right. how free the killer is. Right. And there's a part of him that he'll never he'll never explain to anybody. He'll never. Because he's scared of people seeing that side of him. Because once you right. hear from someone how much they respect or maybe even admire a killer, you're, you're never going right. to look at them the same way, you know? Yeah. And so I think from— But he, but he, he takes stuff the wrong way, though, because people will be like, God, Jackson, you're a real tight ass. And he's like, what'd you say to me? Yeah, yeah. So he gets in fights with other detectives. Nothing's tight down there. It's normal, and it comes out normal. Fuck you. And I got to be honest with you. I think— that that our man, our, our our detective, I think I think he's having some issues that he knows he's aware going to bubble to the surface, and he honestly sure. didn't even want to take the case. He didn't want to take the case at all. No, his no, he, his he captain made him take this case. I I bet he was about to retire. Okay, he was about to retire early because he knows if he doesn't, it's destroying his family. His his life, his personal life is falling apart. He was about to retire to the lavatory yeah. when they were like, hey, don't go in there. We have a case for you. And he yeah. was like, I, I can't right now. Right. And they were like, you're <laughs> the only one who can do this. Yeah. And he gets to the scene of the crime. And he's he's honestly shocked that someone could so maliciously and brutally yeah. violate this bathroom. Like, yeah, there's a right. dead person there too. But like yeah. the the bathroom is really what's of concern. Yeah. And it's like a really fresh dead person too. Like they're all walking in like with handkerchiefs over their mouths, but it is not because of a corpse smell at all. Yeah, this person's been dead for like twenty minutes. The, it's like it just happened. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. honestly amazing they didn't catch the guy. <laughs> yeah. The bathroom and you you wanna know the the how you know the killer is truly unhinged? Mm-hmm. You wanna know how <laughs> you know that this person is like on the run but also out of their mind, like calculated enough to, to to kill and get away with it, but uh unhinged enough to know that they've left the edges of society behind Mm -hmm. every time they use the bathroom they take the handle with them (laughs) on the to the toilet or toilet yeah (laughs) they steal the toilet handle (laughs) so that nobody will be able to like use it again i mean you could use it again but now you gotta because no one's no one really sell toilet handles like that so do you have to replace the whole upper deck, or like like that's how you know this person's a terrorist? Because like, who thinks like that? You know what I mean? Like, that's so chaotic to take the handle. Because now you can't even. It's not even a toilet anymore. Now it's just a bowl of water. It's like it's like unusable, truly, you know. Right. <laughs> okay. So to recap, <laughs> avoid small towns. Uh huh. <laughs> Hats are a plus. Yeah. Cash is king. Mm-hmm. 
uh, watch your diet, eat healthy, right? Also, he took the toilet handle because his fingerprints were on it. <laughs> so he couldn't leave a trace. <laughs> the only thing he touches with his bare hands. I mean, he had left all types of DNA in there, but like... (laughs) (laughs) He don't want to leave the handle because that's fingerprints. That's too easy. They're going to get him quick. Right. Right. (laughs) Make sure you're in shape and make sure you find your opposite. You find your opposite detective. You, I don't know. No, you Even don't want to find your opposite. You, you want, don't want that. Yeah, okay. yeah. You, you want, you actually, what you find a detective that's also pooping the way you are. Yeah, yeah. You need to find a detective with, yeah. like, some serious bowel issues. Cause then he's going to be too busy to catch you. This guy that I'm describing is a grizzled vet that is like, right. has nothing okay. but time to focus because. His his internal issues, and when I say internal issues, I mean his guts. They're so they're so uh, riddled with uh-huh. guilt over like unsolved cases and and mm-hmm. bad cheese that he's mm-hmm. like, I have nothing to focus on but this case, and that's how you get caught. Do you remember in Die Hard when? The one that like one cop's just like, you know, I shot a kid and he like says that, but instead this detective's like, I shit my pants. <laughs> yeah. And then and what then, happened out there? Why are you writing the desk now? I shit my pants. And then everyone else is like, Okay, you got a All wild right. side. <laughs> All right. Everybody does. And he's like, No, nah, I'm scared yeah. if I come into contact with this dude, I'll lose control. And it's like, All right, well that's that's gonna be a, a bridge that we come to when we cross it, like we can't, we can't not chase him down now because you're mm-hmm. scared of what will happen. We right. we have to we have to be diligent. We can't be fearful, you know. And so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that that's just where I'm coming from. Like I think that <laughs> I think that this guy this guy's like probably at least like three murders deep by the time we really get to know our hero detective. Because you know how like. In a lot of these cop movies that with you know with a versus the serial killer thing, mm-hmm, what they will mm-hmm. end up doing, yeah, is they will be spending all this time. The first murder is how the movie starts. Then, yeah, the second murder is like when the person's thinking about not taking it, right? Like like half in, half out, and then there's a murder sure. that happens. Now it's like, ooh, is that one on me because I didn't take it seriously enough initially? Then. The, well, it's usually that second murder is what makes it realize, like, oh, this isn't a random thing. This is a serial killer thing. Oh, these are connected. That's usually what that and one And the is third too. one is the taunt. The third one yeah. is the, like, yeah. hey, you can't catch me. And they left their calling card, which is no toilet handle, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And the person's, like, the person's, like, maybe even still alive. Like, they have, like now the person, now this was right. really just a break in an interrupt. Like, they, like, they probably knocked yeah. the person over the head but didn't like right. get, like kill yeah. them, you know? Um, yeah. So now you don't even know what, what you're really trying to solve. It's like there's no, there's two and a half murders. And then there's a, a, like a bunch of wrecked bathrooms, like more wrecked bathrooms than murders now. Yeah. It starts becoming clear that the, the bathrooms are the goal and the murders are incidental. He's just trying to get to these bathrooms. Yeah, he probably would. And I, I bet you, you know, when you dive in, because all the other um, movies also do this thing where if they do give you a glimpse into the killer, it's usually into like what led them to kill, unless it's exposition. Sure. And it'll probably do a flashback then to him, like as like a teenager mm-hmm. pushing someone out of the way to get to the bathroom. Yeah, and then they fell and they hit their head and they died, and that gave him a thrill though too. Yeah, he likes he likes the the <laughs> the run. Yeah, cause, to the bathroom because now he's really got to get out of here. Yeah, like now he's Absolutely. under duress. Yeah, which just makes him more stressed out. Which just makes him need to go to the bathroom more. Makes it more of an emergency. So now it's this, it's basically, now it's this, it's this, you know, adrenaline train he can't get off of. Yeah, yeah. Also, loves Chipotle. Th- that's another big problem. It's also, again, his diet's not great. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
he has not been taking care of himself for, no, the, for a no, long time. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, you know fried Oreos? He pops them like yeah. pills. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they start they start piecing together in the maps. He's hitting towns that are having state fairs. <laughs> <laughs> he's like eating he's like eating the fried corn on the cob at the at yeah. the carnival and then the other like the cop is standing at the entrance of the carnival he's like looks like you're out of your jurisdiction <laughs> he loses him he loses him in a crowd which is like nearly impossible because my man is like pretty big like he's 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 pretty hard to miss but he loses him in a crowd he's breathing real heavy (laughs) he's breaking like half the rules of being on the run and then yeah exactly we're not talking about this guy this guy is not we hope the detective gets him and then uh you see a guy that's been knocked over family guy style outside of a porter potty <laughs> and that's what the detective's like oh no we're too late <laughs> i like that we have that shorthand of family guy style <laughs> the bent knee and the yeah arm in the back yeah i know exactly what you mean and the arm by the say back family guy style <laughs> no one even bothers to check that dude's pulse they just know <laughs> also by the way the porta potty lead it like the Tower of Pisa. All right. <laughs> There's smoke coming out of it for some reason. Yeah, that that porta potty is doing the most. Oh. This is probably a good time to mention this is a later record for us than normal. <laughs> yeah, it is midnight. Uh, it's past midnight where I am right now. Which isn't so, that late normally, but we usually go a little earlier. Uh, can I pitch you a title for this episode? I know we don't usually do that. Yeah, but I just want to pitch you a title for this episode. Uh, yeah. Can we call it Move Accordingly, parentheses, the worst episode we've ever done? <laughs> I don't know if this is the worst episode we've ever done. I don't I don't think it is. I it think, feels the worst. I feel like, I honestly, if I can be, if I can be completely 100 with you, I actually feel mm-hmm. like we're getting back to our roots because we haven't talked about any sort bowel of bowel movements. movement in in like <laughs> maybe 40 episodes. Well, that's definitely not true. It can't be that long. It's been it's been a while. I had definitely haven't had a story in a while. I don't know if you have. But anyway, I don't know if I, I have think, either. I think We're getting back to our roots. Yeah. I think that honestly, getting back to our toots. Come on. I like that one. I think that a good uh <laughs> A good title would be uh, uh, "Porta Potty: A True Crime Story." <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't. It's gonna be so deep for any payoff. No, 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 no. Here's the thing: in the second act of this film, right? We've already had a face-off at the at the carnival, right? right? So yeah. in the second in the second act now we haven't this got so out of hand we haven't heard our we haven't heard our hero detective speak I feel like he sounds a little bit like uh this is the type of man that oh you got a little Morgan Freeman no not not quite a Morgan Freeman <clears throat> this is like a this is like a drawl uh <clears throat> The, Everywhere we go, <laughs> yeah, we find we just find poopy, more and more poopy. I I think that he's 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 gonna be a little bit flowery in the language. You know what I mean? Like, okay. um, no no matter how Sweet. far he got, we were always on his scent. Huh. <laughs> <sighs> We've chased him through. <clears throat> wait, wait, stop, 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 yeah. stop making me laugh. <laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> All right, we've chased him through three states. If 
five counties at six carnivals. <laughs> <laughs> Something about this stinks to high heaven. It was the Louisiana parking carnival where he did the most damage. Four funnel cakes. <laughs> Three fried Oreos. Twelve baskets of chicken wings. Some of those children will never smell again. <laughs> and one ride on the tilt a whirl. <laughs> Got everything in there, shake it up nice and deadly. <laughs> Like a big stinky bomb. Um, it was the Illinois State Fair where things came to a head. <laughs> it's where we finally cornered the skid mark killer. <laughs> Just outside of Chicago. <laughs> that Italian sausage did him in. He finally met his match. <laughs> We, uh, we saw, wait, 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 we saw, Jesus. we saw an insulin needle in the parking lot, so we knew we weren't far. man was was trying to elude us and busted right out of his fly. The whole zipper was left next to a Honda Civic. <laughs> so now you got this man like trying to hold his pants up running through yeah. the Illinois State Farm and like really like barely past people, like really close lighted people on the way, just leaving a trail of dead. All right. Like <laughs> So the full twist is this is just a scared clumsy man. I he did not he did not mean to kill anyone. This is just a very clumsy man. I that's a great argument for Who the defense, but he he was taking some people out. Like Oh no, I'm saying I'm saying he's still he's still going away cuz which is with that many numbers even if it's involuntary manslaughter, you're going away for a while. I'm just saying that's the final the final twist when when our detective finally has him cornered um I don't <laughs> <laughs> I think on a cruise ship or something. Well, know. this is the thing. I think he I think he manages beyond all hope to make it out of the Illinois State Fair, right? Right. Then yeah. he ends up going to uh, Walmart. <laughs> he's, he's got him cornered in a Walmart bathroom. <laughs> he's got him cornered in a Walmart bathroom, people running out. <laughs> Stampeding out of this bathroom, right? Uh, and then he he walks in, he kicks open the stall door, right? Mm -hmm. And in that moment, he's got he's like got him dead to rights, gun pointed, mm -hmm. everything. And then he's like, I, I can't stand this. And then he has to stand outside until the guy's done. Like he's like, <laughs> this is genuinely, this is so bad. Yeah. Oof. And then after after they arrest him and they put him in the cop car and they're driving back to the station, mm -hmm. all you hear the guy muttering is, I had to go. I had to go. I had to go. And then you hear the detective, me too, son. Me too. <laughs> and then after he's put away in jail, the detective finally gets to go home. He lays his badge on the chief's desk. He goes, I'm done. And he goes home. And then he goes into his house. Takes some Metamucil. Kisses, <laughs> kisses his wife. Goes and he kisses the, son, the head of his sleeping son. And he goes down the hall into the bathroom the door closes and then we just hear the worst noise <laughs> it's it's like, it's like a buzzsaw almost just it's, just it's genuinely so bad that he does end up taking a shower after and he takes one of the cop to. showers you know those cop showers where they like slap the wall <laughs> Those 
cop showers where they slap the wall. You know what I'm talking about, where they just like, I know what you mean. they're just like, <laughs> damn it, who are you? Yeah. Why couldn't I do more? Uh, and that's the pitch we did to this studio, and they said we'd never work in this town again. <laughs> To be fair, the town was Alexandria. It was my hometown, yeah. and they really yeah. don't have the funding to make a movie yeah. of this yeah. of this caliber, really, you know? Yeah. They also did not like the idea, but mainly also they had no budget. Yeah. Especially after that, you know, that movie where <laughs> the dance team had to save the rec center, and that was already kind of a debacle. So I, I should, town never recovered. <laughs> I should also point out that uh <laughs> They they weren't actually like movie producers or executives or anything. They were just like dudes we were talking to. Uh, I believe they kept saying they were parking attendants. I think is what they kept saying. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that means, but mm-hmm. it sounds fancy. Mm-hmm. That's a long job title, so that sounds fancy. So I assume they'd have some sort of authority. A lot of letters. A lot of letters in yeah. that title. CEO is only three letters. That's only three. That's a chump. That's that's chump level of letters. Yeah. Parking attendant. <laughs> Shit, that's basically God. Pretty sure it's Daunt. Which is only three letters. Parking attendant. Intendant, you believe? Mm-hmm. Well, it's us. It's, ah, so it's French. Well, we've lost the plot here. Uh... <laughs> Should we open the mailbag, or are we too shameful? We don't want to bring our listeners into this. <laughs> No, we can open the mailbag. I genuinely don't think this is the worst episode we've ever I'm done. I'm kidding. I'm doing a bit. Oh. Come on now. Okay. Do it a bit. We just don't we just did thirty minutes on poop. Come on. I, it wasn't it wasn't on poop. All right. You realize that, <laughs> it was on right? Poop poop is a plot device. Not even that. Do you are you not aware of what we made? The art that we put together? Are you seriously going to tell me that you don't think what we just did was on par with Along Came a Spider? Well, I think on par with that, yeah. Like, all right. I mean. Uh, this is how, listen. No, no, you no. You know no, me. That's fine, that's fine. No, 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 no. I'm not chewing down the, you, this. I have to be hard on my ideas to make them better and to push for them to be the best they can be. Because I'm also not just handing this idea over to just some hired gun director who's gonna come at some Brett Ratner motherfucker who's gonna come in with no with no with no heart, no no eye, no style of his own. Look, I think that sometimes when you're hard on yourself and it's something that you did with me, it feels like you're being hard on with me and then feel great. Like if like mm. it feels like you're not proud of what we made, and that's that sucks. <laughs> Gotta be honest with you. Doesn't feel mm. good. Like someone looking at their phone when you're trying to tell a story. I really Doesn't was trying to find this heart. <laughs> <art. laughs> <laughs> this one here, I actually want to start with an Instagram message because this also will lead into uh, an email, but. Speaking of, um, you know, names of villains, like our Skid Marks killer, uh, last time we talked about you, if you'd become uh, some sort of ice-based supervillain, mm-hmm. uh, we got a message from Christina on Instagram and uh, said, is it too late to trademark or suggest Josh's villain name be the Punisher? But I feel like that would be my name as your nemesis. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. I'd be the one you're trying to take down with your ice powers. Yeah, it's like how Joker always has like a Batman name for Batman and Robin. Right, like yeah. Batsy what, and uh, Boy Blunder, like Yeah. yeah. And I be- I believe didn't I think we said that your the name you settled on was Man with Ice Powers who hates puns, right? So I think it's perfect then that I'm the pun-based sup- super villain or superhero. I'm not, I listen, I don't think there's no heroes in this. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is just I'm, two guys I'm with superpowers. I'm absolutely fine with there being no heroes. Two guys with superpowers who are just making a fucking problem for the city. There's another movie. No one's done that one yet. Mm-hmm. 
no one's good, no one's bad. It's just, these two guys just hate each other, and it's inconvenient for the entirety <laughs> of this metropolitan city. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, <laughs> this one here, <laughs> this is from Corey. This is an email, and uh, the title of this one is Josh Supervillain Name. Uh, kind of on the same theme here. Hey, guys, love the show. I thought of the perfect name, uh, perfect supervillain name for Josh. The pun ice sure. <laughs> I await my icy death at Josh's hands. Oh, I think I may yeah, have pulled that one, a muscle because that one was a reach. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pun icer is already works, but I like that he made it pun ice sure. Mm -hmm. Still put the sh in there to really make it a cumbersome mm -hmm. pun. It's pumbersome. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Wow. Wow. All right. Um I'm gonna th <laughs> All right. I'm I'm I I want to do something that we rarely do. And I'll take oh, I'll take shit. full responsibility for keeping up with this. Okay? Okay. And I don't know I don't know what's gonna happen right now, by the way, to be honest with the audience. I have no idea what you're about to I, propose. I'm I'm gonna take full responsibility and I will admit that I don't know how we will keep up, but I feel like this some this is something where if any listener is inclined mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to write in sure. and use the subject title so we know. We have to know or else or else it'll get lost. Use okay. the subject title Porta Potty Sequel. I want to hear from you, the listener, what you think <laughs> happens next in this trilogy. All right. <laughs> what do you think happens to our cop? Do, does our does our villain escape prison? You know, is there a copycat? Is there a copycat or copy crap? Is this person's son gonna take up the mantle mm. of the bad guts that lead well, to? The yeah. unchecked crime and chaos yeah. that who terrorizes is the next America. Set of, who is the next set of warm cheeks to sit on this throne? Mm hmm. So, <laughs> you know, I, I want to hear from you what you think happens next. Because I, I personally had a great time doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very funny. I think it's a good time. And I, uh, I look. I'll even extend an olive branch and apologize to anybody who didn't like it. This is not what the show is going to become. Even I may just read them for me. Who knows? But like, uh, if I could have a request to uh -huh. to keep keep these outlines fairly succinct. Don't because we get some long ass emails, and I'm worried I'm going to get like a full script treatment. Yeah. For this Just sequel. remember that what you send us will not get made. It will not get made. And if I get bored, I'm going to stop reading it. Um, I... <laughs> I really, like, needed this. And so once again, I hope that even if this was <laughs> much not, like our killer Josh had to expel some demons, <laughs> I, I really hope that even if this is not your thing, you enjoyed it because it's all in good fun. Yes, I also had a great time. I was just goofing. I was goofing, Josh, like I do on the show, and you were on brand and hating my goofing, but <laughs> but I I <laughs> I'm telling you now, this is not what the show will become. But I do want to revisit it at some point. <laughs> so your wrap up thoughts are <laughs> I'm sorry. We won't do it again, but we're definitely gonna do it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Perfect. I love that. I think that's a great <laughs> I feel like that's very so reasonable. Patient. I think it's reasonable. Yeah. You know, we're do we do this every week. Uh huh. Who knows? Who knows what stories need to be told? Yeah. Yeah.
Thanks so much for listening to The Josh Johnson Show. We had a great time recording. I hope you had a great time listening. If you are looking to catch up with us on any of the socials, you can find me at Josh Johnson Comedy on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. We're going to be posting clips of the show. You can also hit me up at Josh Johnson and at Josh J Comedy if you're still using Facebook. And if you are looking for Logan. (laughs) Sorry, I, I broke. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it was just you going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just <laughs> like you had just come down from a weird high. <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram at Logan M Nielsen, and if you want to get into the mailbag and send us your proposed sequels to Porta Potty, a true crime story. You can email us, joshjohnsonshow at gmail.com. You can also uh, leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, Also, if you want bonus content, uh, (laughs) like a potential trailer we'll put out for (laughs) Port Potty. That's probably not going to happen. But we have a bunch of special content on uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash joshjohnsonshow. We have bonus podcasts there. We have video content. We have replays of our virtual live shows that we do every month. Uh, we'll probably be announcing our one for November pretty soon. I don't think we've scheduled it as of this recording yet, but keep an eye out for that. Uh, we do have some live shows coming up. We will be in uh, Minneapolis at Acme Comedy Club November... What is that? The 14th or something? 17th. Yeah, 17th, 17th through the 19th. Yeah. 17th or 19th. We'll be, we'll be there for that. I'm very excited about that. Um... I'm going to speak for Josh and say he is too. He's giddy with joy. Super excited. Uh, <laughs> I am. Um, huh? I am. Yeah, I know. We had a Me great too. time I last time. And I, w- I didn't even perform when I came up. I just came up and see you. Yeah. So this will be fun. We get to spend the weekend uh, performing up there. And I'm excited because I don't have to fly anywhere for that one. I get to just drive up. That's only a couple hours away. Wait, you didn't do the show last time? No, I just came up to see you, remember? Oh, okay. No, I I just remember. We you were doing we the recorded show. we recorded at the the hotel, that's except where we did the episode about you going to the mall. But yep. so I I came up for the day. Mm-hmm. That's what but it no, was. So this yeah, so we get to work there uh, for for three nights. I believe five shows total. I believe. Mm. Right. Didn't yep. It? Dope, dope. It's gonna be a good time. I'm very excited for that. Well, hit us up with your sequels uh if i i will say this this is this is a thing that i think is maybe worth it and i will read them all right so you don't <laughs> no, you so you, won't. no 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 i i will read them i'll make time to read them right okay if it is wild enough i think we should do it like a little what, what do you a mean little snippet it. of it on the on the show if it's good enough if it's like funny enough we should just take a little time to be like do it when you say do it you mean read the email or do you mean like i do I, like a like like a reading do like a reading of Cause, so now at this point now we're asking for scripts now not a full script no 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 it's okay. just when you read it i think that it's different to just read what someone wrote like might happen and then to perform sure it. okay yeah and it's all just it's only poop based. My request would be please put in as many puns as you possibly can, especially if Josh is reading them. Okay, thanks for listening, everybody. All right. <laughs> <laughs>Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel. Hit the bell notification because apparently it's the only way YouTube will tell you that something happened. And just tell a friend. That's the biggest thing you could do. Just tell one person in your life that you like, maybe you don't like, that this video happened to you. We release the podcast every Thursday on all the podcast apps, so you should find us there and subscribe on those and comment and leave reviews and whatever on all of them. And also, if you want bonus stuff, you can join our Patreon, patreon.com slash Josh Johnson Show. We have bonus podcasts and videos and stuff there, and uh, we'd love to see you 